Hey, everybody. I want to talk about this particular research paper because it's come up about like four to five times now on my social media feeds in like today <laughs> and it just came out today. And then so uh, I want to talk about it overall. It's the illusion of thinking, understanding the strengths and limitations of reasoning models via the lens of problem complexity. Every single person that I've seen that has brought up this paper has brought it up in a wrong context, has <laughs> said wrong things about it. Uh, and to me, like, uh, I do not like debating these things overall and generally because there's too much emotion attached to it. <laughs> That's just the flat out simplistic thing. And then like, I think that the very easy thing to do is to look at this headline, exactly what it says, the illusion of thinking, uh, and then be like, oh, their Apple just proved that the models don't work, right? Like that, that, uh, a Apple just dismiss all the hype, like, uh, et cetera, whatever emotion that you want to throw onto it. Like that's the, all of the reactions that I see within it, right? Any person that is giving Giving you that perspective on this research paper is lying to you. They don't, and they're lying to themselves because they don't understand what this research paper is, what it's saying, the research behind it, etc. They're just seeing the headline grabbing, like, uh, and then going from there and then running with it. Up front within this research paper, having read through it, nothing in this research paper is new to me, and nothing in this research paper. Uh, disproves reasoning as a con like that the models reason or like uh disproves reasoning overall it's understanding the strengths and limitations of reasoning models right uh so they, they have strengths and they have limitations just like every other model and that's what this paper dissects and goes into the illusion of thinking as a headline that's that's headline grabbing but nothing within this actual research paper is in support of this it's all this this is headline grabbing this is to to uh the people that don't actually think and can't actually think about these these things overall and, and comprehend their own thoughts uh, and just want to tie emotion into it, this is for them. For anyone else, this is, this is like what the research paper actually goes into via this method, the lens of problem complexity. And that's uh, what this whole entire research paper focuses on and their entire argument. But like, again, within that, that entire argument is nothing new within this. Right. So, so flat out, um, the bottom line, like, like, uh, here's what, uh, all of their key contributions are, right? I'll just go through all of their key contributions and then I'll talk about it at the end. We question one, we question the current evaluation paradigm of LRMs on established math benchmarks and design a controlled experimental test bed by leveraging algorithmic puzzle environments that enable controllable experimentation with respect to problem complexity. Two, we showed that state of the art LRMs, uh, still fail to develop generalizable problem solving capabilities with accuracy ultimately collapsing to zero beyond certain complexities across zero dif uh, uh, different domains and environments. Three, we find that there exists a scaling limit in LRMs, reasoning effort with the respect to problem complexity evidenced by the counterintuitive decreasing trend in the thinking tokens after a complexity point. Four, we question the current evaluation paradigm based on final accuracy and extend our evaluation to intermediate solutions of thinking traces with the help of deterministic puzzle simulators. Our analysis reveals that as a problem complexity increases, correct solutions systematically emerge at later positions in the thinking compared to incorrect ones, providing quantitative insights into the self-correction mechanism within LRMs. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, that disproves anything that you think when you're like the, the headline that you want to be true. This, this is goes very much against that. Uh, and then we uncover surprising limitations in LRMs ability to perform exact computation, including their failure to benefit from explicit algorithms and their income and consistent reasoning across puzzle types. Sure. So let's go up to the top here, right? Uh, we question the current evaluation paradigms of LRMs on established math benchmarks. Blah, blah, blah. Wait, yes. Uh, uh, like every single person on the planet does. Uh, every single benchmark is, is uh, rigged and gimmicked, and I, I question every single one of them. <laughs> I, I, I can't go over that enough on my channel. Uh, I agree with this statement. Uh, yes. Like, we show that said the art models still fail to develop generalizable problem capabilities with accuracy ultimately collapsing to zero. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, yes. And then so like, like, um, this is known in 1 million percent. And then this is going more and more into what and how we think the models work. Let me break this down into a simple way for you. I'll give you the, the most simple, um, example of this that I can possibly think of. So I'm going to ask you two questions, right? Question number one is what is two times two? 
Second question is, what is a Googleplex to the power of a Googleplex? Two questions within the same domain, right? They're both mathematical questions, both framed very similarly. They should both give you the, you should be able to solve both of those pretty easily. I mean, what's two times two? Everybody should know that, right? So then if you can solve that, then then you should be able to solve what's a what's a Googleplex to the power of a Googleplex? Like, why not, right? It's it's the same domain overall. That, that's the same exact logic that you're playing within this. And then so what we understand at this point as to how these models work and how these reasoning models work is, is that so um, there's a uh, latent space that gets created, right? Geometric space that's that gets created, right? And so let's say like the model learns a bunch of information. It learns the internet. Uh, and then that becomes its universe, right? And then so the internet and then all the concepts that exist in the internet, it plots them and it graphs it. Like it, it send, like places them in places where it just thinks it should go within this geometric space, right? And this geometric space is limited. But um, so some are, are very far away from each other. Some are, are very near to each other, etc. You give the model a prompt, it goes through, it's activating all of these different places within its network, which is its latent space, where it placed all of these different things and all of these different concepts, right? So uh, if you ask it a very hard question, it has to go through and hit all of those different spaces a lot of times, and it has to go through the whole network, uh, and it's essentially like going through it and it has to keep track of all of that, right? So you're going through and, and you're going on a, a crisscross journey and you have to leave breadcrumbs for yourself, uh, and then after like a few miles of that, you get lost. <laughs> like anything would get lost within that, right? Uh, that's complexity of the problem complexity. So if, if that problem complexity is too large for the space, the model will fail on that problem, 100%. That is known across the board, and no amount of reasoning will solve for that. that like, thank you for proving that overall. Uh, that is not new information, okay? We find that there exists a scaling limit in the LRM's reasoning with respect to problem complexity. Yes, uh, as I laid out there, right? Uh, there is a... Um, upper limit with regards towards uh, reasoning capabilities and with regards towards any, like, with regards towards scaling laws, there's scaling laws. I would be shocked if there were not a scaling law associated with LRM's reasoning efforts. If they came out and said that, like, the opposite of this, I would question the heck out of this research paper. So, again, this doesn't do anything. This isn't providing any new information, and it's definitely not providing any sort of, like, uh, whimsical emotional response that you would want to attach to this research paper, right? And... We question the current evaluation paradigm based on final accuracy and extend our evaluation to intermediate solutions of thinking traces with the help of deterministic puzzle simulators. Our analysis reveals that as problem complexity increases, correct solutions systematically emerge at later positions in thinking compared to incorrect ones, providing quantitative insights into the self-correction mechanisms within LRMs. Uh, so like, uh, not only does this paper not prove that like a reasoning overall is a failed concept with then the models and doesn't work. This model proves that it does work. We just don't know the mechanisms for how it works because it works kind of counterintuitively to what you would think, right? Like, um, so it's um, like a, a uh, let's say it's a, the best tokens for when you pose a thinking model, a question is like those very first tokens, right? And then so like immediately you get like very high. It's a, a good value, good investment that steeply drops off, right? And all of a sudden like plateaus down to like almost zero. But then all of a sudden after a while out of nowhere, it just pops back up. And then why is that? I don't know. It's a question that nobody's been able to answer. Uh, but it exists and it proves that something occurs within that process, right? Uh, and then the last thing, we uncover surprising limitations in LRM's ability to uh, perform exact computation, including their failure to benefit from explicit algorithms and their inconsistent reasoning across puzzle types. Uh, so so uh, you're saying that uh, it's not a generalizable process and that it's not fully generalizable. Yes, I, I, uh, Apple Einstein, this is uh, evidence that we have uh, known for a while and with regards to every single AI model that is currently in existence. Uh, and this is the biggest problem that currently exists within AI is, is that it's not fully generalizable. So 
breaking those things down, that's all that this research paper is, says, and does. It doesn't, like, uh, again, like, I, I have seen so many emotional takes on this research paper, it isn't even funny. Uh, and I haven't seen a singular take of a person that has actually read through this research paper and is, like, backing their arguments up based off of it, right? Uh, all So I, I've given you all of the arguments that, that, like, are generally around these things, right? And then, so to me... Uh, None of this is uh, unknown or brand new information or proves anything overall with regards towards uh, that this is always the case, right? Or that this always occurs or that this is a problem overall. Like this is a, a, a good thing. It is known because now that we know exactly it works exactly how I described, what researchers have been doing is figuring out more and more how to essentially uh, shrink the complexity of a problem by breaking it up into multiple steps. And then by doing that, you overcome this uh, particular research here. <laughs> like, so I would say, if anything at all, this research proves, I mean, bottom line, I'll just give you my flat out honest 1 million percent opinion on this. This research paper proves once again that the uh, tech companies in the United States are 100 percent and 1 million percent behind the Chinese companies when it comes to uh, this sort of logic and this sort of research overall within this. Because if you look, like I think it was two or three days ago within this, I went over an Ali Alibaba paper uh, that is uh, along this uh, same sort of concept where, where Alibaba takes and then essentially this problem complexity that they, they describe, Alibaba shows uh, all around it, they prove it out, they give the uh, all of the mathematical equations behind it, all of the algorithms around it, and then they develop a system uh, uh, thinking from future, uh, uh, like, a, or, like yeah, it's like, a, yeah, thinking from future or uh, PFF. Uh, it's like two days ago I went over it. There's a video of it on my channel very specifically, but that research paper is the answer to this. Like that, that takes this one step further. <laughs> like, so, so uh, uh, I get it, like marketing, um, small minds, people are just, and it's Apple, so then everyone's gonna be like, oh, and it's says the illusion of thinking right there, right? So like it says the illusion of thinking, <laughs> I don't have to read anything else. Uh, and then uh, it says Apple, and those are the two things that I need. And then that's what people are going to go off of within this. But uh, if you just one step, one layer deeper uh, within these things, you, you'll see it, it's all, all, like, I mean, flat out, <laughs> like if I would, if I see, uh, and I have already, right? Uh, anyone like citing this research paper for any means, the very first thing I do is you just call them out. Like you, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, uh, and I've had like already a few conversations around that, uh, which has uh, been an interesting day overall, right? But that's uh, like, so uh, I expect that there'll be more and more. <laughs> I expect uh, more and more people won't read this uh, and they'll just, so uh, the illusion of thinking, understanding the strengths and limitations of reasoning models via the lens of problem complexity by Apple. I'll leave a link to the description uh, or a uh, link to this research paper overall. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.